Hello, beautiful people. Danielle here from Transcendence to Truth, your intuitive alchemist and masculine mindset coach. Um, I'm going to wait for a couple of people to jump on. If they're, oh, welcome. <laughs> I'll be out soon. Um, I know everyone's probably eating dinner, so you're probably not going to be seeing this live, but I will wait for a few people to jump on. Um, if you're watching now, I would love to hear your perspective, honestly and truthfully, on this because this is something that I think needs a lot of awareness. Uh, and I mean, the reality is that men's mental health is really suffering in society. And there is so many beliefs and um, judgments around um, men being able to reach out or even be vulnerable from both. Okay. So, um, if you don't follow me on TikTok, TikTok, mostly I, um, do a lot of, um, content on men and belief systems around masculine and feminine energy and understanding the dynamics and the mind and the different belief systems. And I hear constantly that men feel that their only purpose in this reality is to be of financial gain to women and child, right? And this, along with my, it was like rubbing insult to the wound yesterday when I was looking for some um, men's support groups on Facebook to see what was out there, to see if there was anything useful that I could refer some of my men onto for extra support. And there was, there's, there's not much out there and I've got limited battery, of course. Um, you know, there is not much out there. And w I know of women that have searched up to help men and they've searched men's support groups and women's domestic violence support groups pops up. Okay, so this is like frustrating for me. This is really frustrating because when I'm trying to be an activist for an area of society that is really, really distorted and really, really damaged and the beliefs that men just cannot even be vulnerable or even have any mental health concerns, like the, to, to even have a belief system that men don't have anxiety, depression, um, eating disorders and um, body image issues and all of those things that we think, oh, they are only just for women. Like that is just so, so distorted and damaging and men suffer from physical abuse and emotional abuse and narcissistic partners, okay? So men are also empathic. And so there are all of these areas of, of, of truths that have been defined as um, a one sex only sort of situation and it's absolute BS. And it makes me really upset because I want to help support men to know that they can be vulnerable and we're not taught communication. We're not taught how to work through our feelings. We're not taught to look at our belief systems. We're not taught to um, do shadow work. Um, that is something that I have um, put a process together actually. So if you're on watching this and you want to um, volunteer for a live shadow work session on my page to um, show what shadow work looks like and to also get some help with an issue that maybe keep repeating, um, put your name below. I would love to um, demonstrate with you that um, you obviously have to be comfortable being vulnerable on a social media platform. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's it's really distorted. And, and what happens is men if they have had a time where they like have tried to be vulnerable and intimate with someone, it's often been met by women who are really uncomfortable with that. And they actually can't handle a man being vulnerable because it puts them in too much, too much insecurity. So they've been made wrong for their emotions. So that's one way. It's also when a man does open up and shares to you something that's going on for them in their life and they're having some pain around it and they're actually needing someone to hold space and you're the person or if this has ever happened or you know a man that's closed off, it could be because they've what they've done is they've opened up to share and they've authentically shared and tried to say what's happening for them and 
the person they're talking to doesn't actually validate or hear them or even want to know. They listen to talk and they're like, oh, yeah, that happens to me, and then tell their own story. And it's not anyone's fault, okay? It's not anyone's fault. We have been programmed and... um, (sighs) I mean, most of us really haven't had the most amazing examples of parents when it comes to communication. We haven't really been shown how to be vulnerable. We haven't been shown how to be truthful and honest and transparent with ourselves about our own feelings and how to investigate where they come from or why we're feeling them. Um, So I'm not saying it's anyone's fault, but if if you're a woman on my page and there's a comment around a belief around men or a belief around the masculine energy, or if you hear this anywhere, it's like as soon as you say something about men, some some feminist, <laughs> new age feminist, because feminism was a great thing in the past, but it has now turned into men are evil and they're the problem, which is not taking ownership for self, turn around and say, well, what about women when this happens and this happens? And it's not just men. It's like it happens to both both sides of the sexes. Yes, it does. Yes, but I'm not talking about that. There are so many support networks for women. There's domestic violence groups. There's women's centres. There's women's shelters. There's places for extra legal aid if you go and get an intervention order or a protection order it's actually directed as if they already know it's a man like they're talking to a woman you know the system is not designed to actually help support men to be more aware and open and they are i don't even remember what the heading of this topic was now (laughs) Um, the reason they're feeling so isolated and alone and like there's no support because really quite frankly there isn't there isn't support and there isn't awareness and it's challenging to find places to go and it's challenging to find support um, or a, even to have uh, another thing that happens with a lot of my men's clients people with addiction that have gone to different addiction centers or mental health programs or to their doctors and they've had professionals turn around and say that your addiction isn't bad enough we can't help you what (laughs) like wow this is this is how distorted the world that we're living in is and it's not until you actually start to question and look at some of these things that you can maybe be a voice in your own life or with the men in your life or reach out and check in and you know make it normalize it men have feelings men have issues just like women do we all do we're equals as much as we don't actually act like we're equals, we are equals. We have different struggles, different issues that are programmed into us from the beginning of our time as a human. But until it's normalized that there are one in four men suffering and that men are more likely to commit suicide than women. And until that reality is really nailed in, there's going to be a lot more deaths. And that's what it comes down to. A lot more people and men are going to be suffering. And I do not want to see that. I want to see men take ownership for their life, for their belief systems, to heal, to have their heart held, to have their heart held and to feel supported, validated and heard so that they know that there is somebody that actually gets them. You know, for me, being a woman, having a man tell me it's the first time that they've ever heard that somebody's got them and understood them. That in itself is very, very confusing. Confusing. (laughs) And, and, you know, 
it just shows how men can't talk to men and men can't talk to women. And it's not about you females. It's not about me. I had to do all my own stuff. I had much support. There was a lot of support for me. I went through domestic violence. There are support groups. There are uh, so much. There is so much. Let's stop pointing the finger because every single person is responsible for their own stuff. Every single person is responsible for your own choices, your own actions, your own mental health issues. And it takes a willingness to go, hang on, yeah, okay. If I'm having these patterns and I'm creating this within my life, I have to take ownership for it. Stop pointing the finger out at everyone else. Stop even pointing the finger at your abusers, at your childhood. Have an awareness. Look at it. Yes, it's created a belief. But until you investigate it or look for some kind of inner understanding as to why you're choosing that outlook, you'll continue to recreate it. You'll continue to have resistance. You'll learn the lesson over and over and over again until it's enough pain that you go, oh, hang on, I actually don't want to do this again because it hurts too much. I love you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have a beautiful evening and any comments, abuse, points of view, anyone that you think may get value from this video, please put a, just give me something. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to go hang out and do all my lives on TikTok because they talk to me. <laughs> all right. I love you. Mwah.